of tongues, the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. They appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's such a powerful experience. Amen. That's a life-changing experience. Amen. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there dwell Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Perdia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in all the parts of Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Creeds and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful words of God. They were all amazed. We're all in doubt. Saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mock, saying, these men are full of new wine. But Simon Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And my servant and my handmaids will pour out in those days of my spirit, <coughs> and they shall prophesy. Amen. Praise God. Tongues in the Bible fall into two very distinct categories. When you're trying to understand where tongues fall biblically, you've got to distinguish between these two categories to really understand tongues. Praise God. Tongues here and to every new believer is an initial sign, amen, that the Holy Ghost has infilled us or has baptized us completely. Amen. That is that you can be sure you've pleased God, you've followed the plan of salvation, and your faith is pure and your experience is pure and true with God. It's an initial sign. Amen. Also, the second category for tongues that were used in the church and experienced the Holy Ghost were edification of the believers speaking with tongues and edification of the church. Amen. So the two categories tonight that tongues are used in the Bible throughout the word of the Lord are an initial sign as a babe. Praise God. How many of you, uh, go ahead to excuse me. <coughs> I have an awful cough. But how many of you have ever been in a room when a baby's born and you get to hear that first cry? <laughs> it's a beautiful thing when you have a newborn baby and you get to hear that first cry. Praise God. You know there's life in it. Amen. Uh, that's the first category of tongues. New birth. Amen. When new birth happens, tongues happen as an assign. a sign. Sign. Life. It's a sign of life. It's a sign of the control of the powerful spirit of the Holy Ghost in your life. Amen. Amen. And it's a beautiful thing to hear somebody speak in tongues for the very first time because you know it's supernatural and you know it's real. Amen. But then it's also used for edification of the church and edification of the believer speaking with tongues. By definition, when you compare Acts 2 with Acts 6, or Acts 2, 4 with Acts 6, 2, 6, 8, and 11, you find the Bible defines tongues as languages. Languages. Everybody say languages. 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 There are two types of of languages or tongues uh, are in the frame of reference which we're studying tonight. Praise God. Amen. First is other tongues. Other tongues is a language that the speaker has never learned, has never studied. It's spoken as the Spirit gives utterance. Praise God. Amen. It could be spoken as other nationalities or other native tongues. Uh, although it's another tongue to the speaker if somebody's present who spoke that particular language, they might be able to understand the speaker. Brother Allen, years ago, heard someone, or Brother Robert heard someone speaking, and they understood some of the language that this person was speaking. 
And they went to our pastor after service and they said he was speaking Latin. And uh, uh, they said, how, how do you know? Because Latin is closely tied to Spanish. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's, uh, 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 some of the root words are connected. And I can understand some of the words that he was saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, he asked, has he ever studied Latin? And my dad knew the guy that was speaking in touch and no, <laughs> that man's never studied Latin, a word of Latin in his life. But that was the power of the Holy Ghost in his life. Uh, confirming the supernatural power of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, and so it's other tongues. Unknown tongues, praise God, uh, are spoken. Praise the Lord. Um, unknown tongues are where translators tell us the word unknown. It is not the original text. It's nevertheless a properly loose scriptural term. A person speaking in tongues of unknown tongues is not understood by man and is speaking to God. So, amen, there are other tongues that we speak, praise God, that can be understood. And then there are unknown tongues that we speak where someone is speaking to God. I've heard people sing in tongues. And you can tell that their worship is solely between them and God. I've heard people speak in tongues in prayer. And you can tell that their uh, experience is between them and God. And it's uh, the Holy Ghost edifying that person. It's edifying them at the time of their worship and praise. In other words, God is conferring to them, I'm real, you're real, and we're connected. So now I can do something in your life. And you don't have to worry about connecting to me. We're connected. Just ask what you will. Praise God. Amen. So unknown tongues um, are exclusive uh, to the church and those who receive the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking with tongues uh, at the time when they received it. Praise God. It is a supernatural and miraculous manifestation from heaven. Each one of them are. Every time you pray and speak in tongues, it has to be of God. Yeah. It can't be manufactured by man. It's got to be a God thing and God touch. Sunday morning, walk through this altar, praise the Lord, and you couldn't help but have a tremor in your voice and worship and praise because of the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. When Amen. God touches you, in such a powerful way, you can't help it, praise the Lord. If you're trying to force speaking in tongues, then that's not of God. That's not of God. When you receive the Holy Ghost and you receive the Spirit of the Lord in a mighty and miraculous way, you will not have to force speaking in tongues, praise God. So these two categories we look at tonight, amen, uh, the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost that, that tongues are used in the Bible and edification of the church assembly tonight in the time I have left. The initial evidence of the Holy Ghost. Uh, before beginning this lesson, we've talked about, amen, the steps of uh, receiving the Holy Ghost, repentance, amen, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you take these steps seriously, as they did on the day of Pentecost, and you follow this procedure, you know, when somebody buys into something, Praise God. And they are connected to it. Amen. You're invested in it. Uh, it's not hard to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's not hard to receive the power of God. You've got to invest in it though. And go through the steps. And understand them. And then obey and uh, follow them. And when you do, praise God, the promise is unto you, your children, and those who are far off from me. Anybody and everybody can receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's for every. Body. Simon Peter declared that the promise of the Holy Ghost was to all people. All people. Amen. Everybody received the Holy Ghost in the word of the Lord that wanted it. Everybody received the Holy Ghost that wanted it. So since we can and we do receive the Holy Ghost, I'm so thankful. What sign or evidence is given to assure us, blessed assurance, that we have the gift of God? The only biblical gift. The only biblical. And isn't that what we want to do? Yes. We want to stay connected to the Amen. Word of God. Yes. Amen. I can't go outside of this book. I've got to stay connected to the book. And the only biblical evidence that someone received the gift of the Holy Ghost, praise God, Amen, was speaking in other tongues. Amen. As the Spirit of God. I find no other evidence or sign given in the scripture. So because of that, a precedent has been set, okay? A precedent has been set. 
in the word of the Lord, praise God, that, amen, New Testament believers spoke in tongues when they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. Praise God. That's a precedent that's been set. Simon Peter did not say, he said on the day of Pentecost, amen, uh, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But he did not say, you shall speak in other tongues. But does that mean that tongues isn't a part of the plan of salvation or a sign of the plan? No, because the precedent was set that every new believer in the word of the Lord, there were signs following, praise God, the obedience of the plan of salvation. Praise God. Amen. Now, I don't believe God wants people to focus on the tongue. He doesn't want us to focus on speaking in tongues. That's why right. Simon Peter didn't put that in there. Right. What he wants us to focus on are the steps of salvation. And then let him take care of that. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So we focus on repentance. We focus on baptism. We focus on receiving his spirit and surrendering our lives to God. And the tongue is evidence of uh, him filling us with the spirit of the Lord. So no other way in the New Testament believers, amen, uh, show the sign of believing and receiving the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Other than speaking in other tongues. Now, we know that with that comes joy, peace, happiness, right? Uh, Beatitudes are all added in there, the gifts of the Spirit. But those are not evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Those are results of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Those are the meted out, amen, outcomes, amen, that show up in your life of receiving the Holy Ghost. Many use the argument and the fallacy that tongues are given, were given to those on the day of Pentecost for the purpose of preaching to other nationalities in their native tongue. Amen. They'll say that the only reason they spoke in tongues on the day of Pentecost was because God wanted them to preach to other nationalities. But if you look at Acts 2.11, uh, it's clearly refuted when it says, a listener declared, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Amen. Preaching on the day of Pentecost was done by one man. Anybody know who that was? Simon Peter. Simon Peter. Praise God. He was using the keys to the kingdom that Jesus Christ had given him. Amen. I, I wondered why, you know, people... They're proponents of this theory. They send their missionaries to language school. <laughs> if you really believe that the Holy Ghost is given to speak to other nations and other tongues, why don't you just have faith that God will just open it up over there and you can just start speaking in another, another language to preach to people? Praise God. Uh, but the Bible says 120 believers at the day of Pentecost were speaking in other tongues. Declaring the wonderful works of God as the Spirit gave them utterance. Listen, don't let anybody sell you short when you speak in tongues. Speaking with tongues is the one and only sign that God has given to New Testament believers as evidence that they've received the Holy Ghost. Look, Christ died on Calvary to give you this experience. That's what I don't get. Somebody said, amen. I don't believe we have to do that. Do that or this or that. Well, that's the kind of relationship with God that they have. It's a, half, what do I have to do, God, to live for you? Amen. When I look at it, like, what do I get to do to live for you? What, God, what are the benefits that you gave your life for me? Amen. So that I could do here on earth. Amen. He gave his life on the cross at Calvary to give us the experience to be able to speak in other tongues. As the Holy Ghost fills our life. Amen. And gives us the utterance. Praise God. It's the most wonderful thing that could ever happen to, to a person in their life. You can't purchase it with money. There's not enough money in the world to buy it. You can't buy it. Amen. You can't coax it out of God. You can't trade it with someone else. No. Amen. It's an experience that everyone should and can have. And it's a gift and a wonderful experience that Christ gave his life for. Amen. Amen. He is, don't ask God for tongues. Right. Ask Him for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. When we come to church, 
we, I don't focus on time. And saints of God, the more you grow in God, it's not you won't focus so much on the tongue. That's right. You focus on that connection with God, mm -hmm. right. feeling His Spirit. What can I do to love Him more? What can I do to praise more? Prayer, pray more. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. In Luke 11, 1 through 13, or 1 Corinthians, excuse me, that's get one, the unknown tongues uh, scripture. For he that speaketh unknown tongues speaketh not to men but unto God. For no man understandeth the Spirit. He speaketh mysteries. Amen. Praise God. This is going to take us into uh, our second part, the edification of the church and the edification of the individual. But in Luke 11, 1 through 13, the Bible says it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he had ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, and he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven. And this is the class, this is an example of prayer that Jesus gave to the church. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so on earth, give us this day, by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is dead to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He said unto you, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight? He said unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as needed. I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. Amen. What's importunity? Everybody say persistence. Persistence. Amen. He keeps knocking. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, friends only do so much out of love. But you, you get under their skin enough. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Right. Kids are asleep. Amen. Okay, I'll get you something. Just stop knocking at the door. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Jesus says here, ask and it shall be given you. And then notice it's an ascending structure of persistence. Seek, you shall find. And then it goes a little higher. Keep knocking. And it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, perceiveth, and see, he that seeketh findeth. Him that knocketh, it shall be opened. The son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father. Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being able, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Amen. Don't ask God for tongues. No. Amen. Amen. Ask God for the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Tongues, amen, is uh, accompaniment to the Holy Ghost. The key and the focus should be God's Spirit in your life. And God said here, He said, you can and shall have it. Mm -hmm. But there are two things that you need to understand about receiving the Holy Ghost. Number one, persistence counts. Right. Yeah. What does persistence do in our life when we receive the Holy Ghost? Persistence does two things. Number one, uh, I think it shows God our intention. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, the desires of the heart. God sees the desires of man's heart. Mm -hmm. He sees our desire. And it says, God, I, this is, I'm for real about this one. And I need this. But number two, I think it shows us our desire. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it proves to us how desperately we need this. And so it gets my mind in the right train of thought. If, uh, in, in, uh, how many of you have got an app on your phone? There's a, uh, a marketing strategy with uh, iPhone apps and, and uh, Android apps. It's called the 1.5 seconds are done app, uh, uh, concept. And what that means is there's so many apps on, on, online that you can buy. We've got apps for maps. We've got apps for music. We've got apps for you can turn your house on and off. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I wish I could turn my wife on. No, no, no. no I'm just kidding. Praise the Lord. No, I was totally joking. Praise the Lord. I woke you up, though. Amen. Praise God. But we've got apps for everything, right? Amen. Right. Steve Jobs, uh, he uh, coined the frame. There's, a, there's an app for that. Praise God. 
you need something there's an app for that. But in, in, with the app uh, developers, there's a marketing uh, theory that if, if somebody doesn't stay with your app for more than 1.5 seconds, if they look at it, open it up, and it just doesn't interest them, it's over. You'll never be successful with that app. You'll never do anything with it. But if you could get somebody to linger for two seconds on your app and say, oh, this looks interesting, then you've got it. And you've got a successful product, right? Praise God. Amen. Where was I going with that? <laughs> Persist oh, persistence. Praise God. Persistence counts. Amen. Persistence counts. And it's with that with God. And it proves to us this is something real in my life. And I need to, amen, uh, I need to pursue it. Praise God. So he said the Holy Ghost should be for everybody. And there's two things you need to understand. Is that number one, persistence counts to God and to us. And number two, that God loves you unconditionally. Yes. And there's nothing on his end that will hold you back. Yes. Only you. Yes. Praise God. Yes. So when you want the Holy Ghost and you're ready, lift your hands and ask him for it. And he will fill you with the Holy Ghost. He's not going to give you a substitute. He's not going to try to give you something. Amen. I'll appease you. He will give you what you want. Yes. Amen. So I ask and see. So <clears throat> tongues, amen, is just a direct result in the initial evidence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. The second part, tongues in the Bible, and when we look at the following cases, uh, it's not continuing evidence we're full of the Holy Ghost. It's good to speak with tongues for the purposes outlined in the areas of personal and church edification. Praise God. Amen. And uh, uh, we need to be very powerful and very aware of the fact, amen, that there, that there are many factors that are indicative of a walking in the Spirit of God. Amen. Not just tongues. Praise the Lord. You don't have, uh, uh, tongues is not necessarily the only factor indicative of walking in the Spirit of God. If you are obedient to the teaching of the Scriptures, you've got to bear fruit. Amen. You've got to be faithful to God in every way. You've got to abide in Christ. And add to your experience every day for spiritual stabilization in your life. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But uh, Holy Ghost and tongues also edify. And they also add to all of these areas. Amen. Of walking with God. Tongues is an instance uh, or an exercise of one of the nine spiritual gifts. In the second category tonight. And I have just a few minutes left. Of edification of the church. And edification of the believer. Praise God. Amen. Um, for tongues to accomplish edification for the assembled believers, it's got to be accompanied by another one of the nine spiritual gifts, which is interpretation of tongues. Those are two separate uh, individual gifts that God gives people in the church, speaking with tongues, as edifying the church with an interpretation of tongues as God gives that uh, interpretation. Praise the Lord. You've been in many church services where this has happened, where one person, a deep move of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, one person, amen, will begin to speak in tongues very audibly, and in reverence to that, the rest of the congregation will silence, and there's a holy hush that comes over the place. Amen. And then, after a few moments, there is an interpretation of this. Amen. And when Paul talked to a, a church, he spoke of the church congregation, those that came together in the church. Amen. Praise God. He talked about speaking with tongues as edifying, edifying the church, edification of the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. There are three uh, 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 courses in the word of the Lord. Paul dealt with courses here in the word of the Lord. Amen. Uh, for the edification of the church. Three of the nine spiritual gifts involve speaking. Amen. Prophecy involves speaking. Tongues involves speaking. And interpretation of tongues involves speaking. Three of the nine gifts uh, that Paul spoke of in the church involves speaking out. They don't replace or supersede the preached word of God. He wasn't talking about the preaching of the word of God. Uh, Churches are not perfected by spiritual gifts. Churches are perfected how? By preaching mm -hmm. the word of the Lord. Paul said by foolishness preaching. Praise God. He called it foolishness. I love that when I went into uh, uh, went into preaching of what I was going to be doing. <laughs> Amen. For the next several years. 
was foolish to Jesus Christ. It was foolishness. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Uh, uh, praise. But the church would be edified through the word of God. Amen. Amen. Be edified through the word of the Lord. And the control of every service should be in the hands of a pastor. Praise God. But tongues, when it happens in a church service, um, it edif edifies the assembly. It can edify the assembly. Yeah. Amen. It, uh, uh, it accomplishes sort of the same thing as a prophecy. God chose, chose tongues in their interpretations assigned to unbelievers in 1 Corinthians 14.22. Praise God. And they follow three things. Edification, exhortation, or comfort. Amen. It'll edify, it'll exhort, or it'll comfort the church. I'm thankful God can speak to His church. Amen. You understand that this is uh, God's church. Yes. This is God's church. Amen. It's not mine, it's not yours, it's God's. And when God wants to speak to His church, Paul understood, amen, that spiritual gifts are not given, and this is important to understand, Spiritual gifts and speaking uh, in tongues to the, to the church are not given to set the church in order. Right. It's not given to conduct business affairs. No. Uh, spiritual gifts weren't given to purchase property, no. build buildings, no. instruct others in giving money, no. pronounce judgment, no. marriages. No. Even though we pray before we marry somebody, no. that God would anoint their marriage. Uh, but that's, that's not the purpose of spiritual gifts. Amen. Spiritual gifts seek to edify, exhort, or comfort a church. When God speaks, it should be a comfort to individuals. Yes. Every instance of tongues I've ever heard were a comfort to me. Mm -hmm. They were a comfort to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. I've rarely heard uh, tongues given as a rebuke to a church. Mm -hmm. That God will rebuke a church. But it's always to me been God trying to comfort his church. Mm -hmm. And God trying to draw his church closer to him. Mm -hmm. You ever notice that? Mm -hmm. It's always been God trying to just speak to you. Because it's the voice of love after all, isn't it? Yes. Yes. God is love. Yes. And when he speaks in a way that never judges, never condemns.